Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to the Mac Break Studio. We're in the studio here with Mark Spencer and, of course, myself talking about Final Cut Pro, working an ongoing series on Apple's amazing improvements and workflow, enhance, workflow enhancements. And you're going to show us today the dual viewer. Dual viewers, yes, yes. And it's kind of funny, uh, myself, <laughs> that um, you know when Final Cut Pro 10 first came out, that was one of the kind of really radical redesigns is there was kind of one viewer. And a lot of NLEs historically have two. sort of source and record or right. two. It's like, wait a minute. Um, but I've gotten really used to it. It's amazing because of skimming and everything, it's very easy to preview stuff from um, your event library and then from your timeline. But there's still times when it'd be nice to have another uh, viewer. Yeah, uh, so, uh, admittedly. Admittedly, and now, now we do. So what I love about it is you can just turn it on when you need it, and when you don't, you've got all this beautiful screen real estate. Yeah. So this is a situation where I want to do some matching action, okay? I've got a narrative. This is a show called Missing Persons with Rain Wilson and Jordan Belfi. And uh, I've got the kind of the wide shot in the timeline here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play through it. So what happens when you have brain cancer? Do you think I have brain cancer? All right, so I stopped there. So he says, what happens if you have brain cancer? And Jordan says, you think I have brain cancer? And what I want to do is, before he delivers his line, do you think I have brain cancer? I want to cut to a close-up on him, give it a little more power there. Right. So what I'm going to do is come up uh, to about the point where I want to do that. So let's play through that again. So what happens when you have brain cancer? All right, right where he raises his head. Yeah, he just lifts right his head where he, off the he lifts his head. Now, before I do any further, I want to open up this, this other viewer. So what you do is go to the window menu, Blah, blah, blah. Go to the window menu and choose uh, Show Event Viewer. So when we talk about um, when we talk about dual viewers in Final Cut Pro 10, we're talking about a separate event viewer. Let me bring it up. Control Command Three is the keyboard shortcut. It shows you uh, the contents of any event. All right, so it's very specific to events. So, in so it's not li not like previous versions of Final Cut Pro and Legacy where the 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 viewer would show, you could actually look at timeline clips in the viewer. Yeah, you could double click them up into that. Right. This is different. You have this to think about it a little bit differently. This is on the right. event viewer. So here I have a close up of, uh, of Jordan in the same, a separate take of a close up. And let me just play a little bit. So what's going to happen when you think you have brain cancer? Notice his line is delivered at a different time. Yes. Do you think I have brain cancer? Okay, so let me back up to before he delivers his line and before he turns his head. There. So I'm going to stop there. So now we can look at both viewers, right, and see that we've got a nice match in his head. It's lifted, it's straight, and that's a, a great place to cut. And I couldn't do that before. I couldn't look, see those simultaneously Actually, like you this. could, but you had to toggle Command-1, Command-2, Command-1, Command-2, yeah, Command-1, yeah. Command-2. But now you've got them <laughs> both right there. So I'm going to set an in point there. I'll play a little bit. Do you think I have brain cancer? And I'll stop there, O for out. And then I'm just going to do a D for an override edit. And let's see kind of how that works. So what happens when you have brain cancer? Do you think I have brain cancer? Okay, so I might want to tighten it up a little bit from sure. there, but I've got the basic matching action very easily. So the dual viewers make it easy. And the great thing is just um, turning it on and off very quickly. I can go back. See, and I like that. In fact, I actually call that the on-demand viewer. Yes. So we're like every other NLE that you, you have to deal with both viewers all the time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, even Final Cut Pro, you had that window. Here, you only bring it up when you need it. I think that's right. a pretty um, useful uh, feature. And especially doing a lot more editing on laptops where right. you've got more premium real estate, turning it off and off is, yep. is, is really great. So uh, Control Command 3 is something I use a lot to switch it on and off. Now, let's look at a completely different example of something that you can do where you can do some color matching right. using the two viewers. So I'm going to switch to this shot. I've got this shot in my timeline of these grapes. I'm also going to go to um, a shot in my uh, in my event library where I've got this is an early morning shot uh, of these grapes, and then this is a late afternoon shot, and you can see they don't match at all. Right. Okay. And it's going to be tough to match perfectly because this morning shot's in the fog, this afternoon shot in the bright sunlight. Yeah. 
you know, they're quite a bit different, but I want to see if I can get them closer to look like they happened at the same time, okay? So what I want to do is uh, basically color correct this guy to match this guy. Now, here's the kind of cool thing is I can turn on, uh, I have this sort of a access to all these display and channel and overlay options for my regular viewer. So for instance, I'll show the video scopes and I have those same options for my event viewer. So I'll show video scopes. So you have two separate scopes for two separate windows. Yes. And it goes a little further. There's a new uh, setup option for my scopes. I can go under settings and choose a vertical layout. So I'll choose that. You see I've got my waveform set up here and I'll do it for the other one as well. Just choose a vertical layout. And now I have a side-by-side -side comparison of these two shots with the waveform directly underneath, which is a direct visual relationship, right? Between right. the brightness values of the clip as you move along them. And this is kind of small on this, on this laptop here, but I can take these two separate, these two windows and throw them on a separate monitor, and these two viewers. Fill the entire screen with the waveform yes. monitor and the images. Yes, exactly. I can move them right to a, uh, a separate monitor and put them up there. And you can also adjust the, the distance between them so you can size them separately and make it easy. In fact, let me close my event library to make a little bit more room here for everything. Move this over because the next thing I'm going to want to do is open the inspector to be able to do the color correction. Color so let's kind of size these uh, somewhat equally. So with this, this afternoon grapes clip selected, I'll go to the correction. And right now I'm looking at the waveforms. I'm going to kind of go to exposure first. And this is too bright, so I'm going to kind of bring down uh, the highlights here. And it's a little bit too dark, too, so I'll bring those up and kind of washes it out. I'm never going to get it perfect, but I can get it a lot closer. The of yeah, the I want to roughly match it's it as best I can. It's a saturation shoot as well because there's much more saturation. Exactly. In the so so I, can, I can sort of try to bring the saturation up. Um, I'm not going to see much there. I could switch to the vector scope and get a sense of that. In fact, why don't we go ahead and go ahead and switch to the vector scope for both of these to get a sense of hue and saturation. You can see this is a more saturated Maybe image. the parade scope would be and good because you can see the blues. Yeah, and actually that. that's a very good idea. Let's go to the parade scope. So we want to go to the waveform and then go to the parade view, RGB parade. Mm -hmm. And we'll go over here also to the waveform and the RGB parade. And we can get a sense, let's see, just get this update. There, there we go. go. So now we see a very big difference yeah. in um, overall levels. But let's see, you know, this has much more concentrated blues kind of in the mid-range. So I can start to go to color and see if I can start to manipulate to get uh, kind of some more blues in there and get those grapes to match. I'm also using my eye to get, get those to match a little closer. Right. Okay, so a combination between the scopes to give me some aid, but looking at my eye and I can, I can judge them pretty well. Right. So this is a great use for dual viewers where you're looking at a, a, a sort of a source clip you want to match to and then you're matching to it right there. Uh, makes it super easy. Now, what you might say when you look at this, like, well, great, but what if I wanted to match to a clip in my timeline? Yeah, that's uh, that's what's coming up on all the boards. It's like, yeah, I, yeah it's this like, is great, but I want to match two shots in the timeline. Yeah, so let's say I wanted I wanted to match it to this clip here instead. I don't want to match it to the event clip. Well, you could always go to the event clip, right? Because you can always go um, shift, -F. shift F, and that will match frame to the event clip. But check it out. That already, event, oh, I see that one hasn't been color graded. Hasn't been color graded, right. So I don't want to match to an uncolor graded. I want to match to a color graded one. Right. And frequently, if the shots are the same, you just copy the color grade over. Sure. But let's say you actually, you can't for one reason or another. Um, one way you can do that is take this guy and make a compound clip out of it, okay? So uh, in fact, to make this really clear, I'm going to make a new event. We'll see if it'll put it in the new event. Uh, and then I'll select it and I'm going to choose File, New Compound Clip. And I'll put it in the new event and I'll just call it CC for Color Correct. And that places it and now I've got the color corrected version in the event to match to. And then I can take the one that's in the event, that, I'm sorry, that's in the timeline and choose Break Apart Clip Items and go back to exactly where it was. So the one in the timeline hasn't changed at all now. I made it a compound right. clip and then I unmade it. <laughs> I don't know if unmade is a word, but I broke it back apart. And the result is I now have a clip in my um, event that I can match this clip to. And I can go through the same color correcting process. So there's process. a couple of little steps, extra steps in there. There are, you know, and it's sort of the fact that this is an event viewer, so right. you need to have something in the event to match Got to. It. But if you do want to match in the timeline, there is, there is a way to get there. I think most of the time, though, you're going to be doing things from the event 
uh, to match to for matching action sure. and that sort of thing. A lot of color correction you're going to handle by copy pasting since you can copy paste specific attributes. Exactly. Or which will gonna, be or another episode. Or you'll go into DaVinci Resolve. Or you DaVinci Resolve, right? There's many other ways yeah, you'll do yeah. with that. So um, that in a nutshell is uh, a couple of applications for the new event viewer in Final Cut Pro 10. Excellent. So if you want to check out more uh, on 10.06, we have a Final Cut Pro 10.06 in-depth and uh, an introductory tutorial that'll teach you all about Final Cut Pro 10. You can find it at rippletrain.com. We want to thank you for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. Thank you.